Good morning, I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. Karen, this may be the most anticipated earnings report of the season. Later today, we're going to find out how NVIDIA fared in its second quarter. The stock has been the poster child for excitement over artificial intelligence. It's up more than 200% so far this year. And let's get more from Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Technology Analyst Mandeep Singh. They have built a business that could generate almost $50 billion in revenue by 2025. This is huge. I mean, in terms of creating a new category and, you know, getting that kind of lift. The bigger question to me is it was a monster beat last quarter. The expectations have gone up a lot since then. And right now we are talking about a $50 billion run rate for data center by 2025. What can they do more? Because when you're trading at this rich valuation, the expectation is if you're in line, that's not enough. Mandeep Singh at Bloomberg Intelligence says nearly 90% of analysts tracked by Bloomberg recommend buying NVIDIA. Well, while Wall Street awaits NVIDIA earnings, John, banks are also in focus. This time, mid-sized lenders are under the microscope. The FDIC is set to propose new regulations for those banks, and we get the details from Bloomberg's Doug Krisner. The plan will be unveiled next week and would require banks with as little as $100 billion in assets to issue enough long-term debt to cover capital losses if those lenders ever failed. The FDIC will also unveil a plan to make those same banks fortify their hypothetical wind-down plans. It's the latest response to the collapse of three regional banks back in March. The issue of who should shoulder cost for bank failures became contentious when the FDIC had to cover all deposits of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank including those that were unsecured. In New York, I'm Doug Krisner, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, thanks, Doug. There's also news this morning on the push to get workers back to the office. Now Goldman Sachs dialing up pressure to get employees back five days a week. That story from Bloomberg's Charlie Pellet. The Wall Street giant is embarking on a fresh effort to enforce its policy of working from the office five days a week. Though revenue-producing employees have mostly returned full-time, senior managers have grown frustrated by the reluctance of staff in other groups constituting a significant chunk of its workforce. Goldman has been one of Wall Street's most ardent return-to-office champions. In New York, Charlie Pellet, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Charlie, thank you. Well, we have some news on the labor front this morning. UPS employees have a new contract. Union workers ratified a new five-year labor agreement. It delivers substantial wage increases, ending a tense period of negotiating that threatened a strike. And shares of Nike fell another 1.3% yesterday. So that brings the stock's losing streak to nine days, the longest since the company's initial public offering back in 1980. Nike shares have dropped 7% in that period. The latest slump appears tied to weak earnings from Dick's Sporting Goods. There's also a concern about softening demand in China. Well, speaking of China, John, it looks like global investors have been shedding blue chip stocks in the country, accounting for the longest stretch of outflows on record. Overseas, funds have been fleeing China's mainland market, offloading the equivalent of $10.7 billion in a 13-day run of withdrawals. That's the longest since Bloomberg began tracking the data in 2016. And turning to politics now, Karen, tonight is the first U.S. Republican presidential debate. The GOP frontrunner Donald Trump will be notably absent from the event. Let's get more from Bloomberg political contributor Jeannie Shinzano. Donald Trump is running like an incumbent president. You know, he is somebody who never said that he lost the 2020 election in his mind. He is president, and presidents, incumbent presidents running for re-election don't participate in these kinds of things. So, um, you know, he is playing it like that. And, you know, I think it's interesting. We keep talking about how he's not going to be there physically, and he will not. But he will be overarching this entire debate and it's going to be really hard for these other eight people to get out from under his shadow. Bloomberg contributor Jeannie Shianzano says the debate could be overshadowed by Trump tomorrow when the former president then heads to Georgia to be booked on criminal charges. Well, now to the latest, John, on those devastating wildfires in Hawaii. Officials on Maui are saying there are an estimated 800 people that are still missing. And now the search methods in the area are shifting. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has that story. 
Governor Josh Green says now the painstaking task of going through some of the half-standing buildings. Those buildings are very fragile and they have to use um, some additional equipment to peel back uh, some of the, like the levels of floors that collapsed. And warns of many more tragic fines. We do expect to see a lot more loss of life. It's going to be tragic. I want to brace everyone for that. He says the president has granted his monetary requests. I'm Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Daybreak. All right, Ed, thank you. And coming up on Bloomberg Daybreak, we'll have more global headlines plus a check of sports. And this is Bloomberg. All right, thanks, Karen. And it's time now for a look at some of the other stories making news in New York and around the world. And for that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Amy Morris. Amy, good morning. Good morning, John. And you had mentioned that former President Trump is to be booked as early as tomorrow in Georgia. Well, defendants are slowly showing up at the Fulton County Jail to be processed in the Georgia election fraud case all this week. Bloomberg's Nancy Lyons has that update. There are 19 defendants, including former President Trump, and they have until midday Friday to surrender. Attorney John Eastman was one of the first to show up for processing. I am confident that when the law is faithfully applied in this proceeding, all of my co-defendants and I will be fully vindicated. Former President Trump has said he'll surrender to authorities Thursday, but his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, is asking a federal judge to block state authorities from arresting him if he does not surrender. Nancy Lyons, Bloomberg Daybreak. And now we're getting reports. Former Trump attorney and former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani will surrender today. ABC News is reporting Giuliani will head to Atlanta with former New York City Police Commissioner Bernard Carrick, who will help him through that process. Giuliani's lawyers are reportedly working with the DA on a bond package. And we've been telling you about the GOP presidential primary set for tonight. Some candidates are crying foul after they didn't qualify for tonight's debate. Former Congressman Will Hurd tells ABC he he has no intention of dropping out. I've always said I'm not. My goal is not to peak on on August 23. My goal is not to peak next week. The goal is to peak uh, later in the winter before the first election, before voting begins. Eight candidates are expected to be on the stage tonight in Milwaukee. Several who did not make the cut accuse the Republican National Committee of cherry picking the polls. We've told you Dick's Sporting Goods has seen a whopping 23 percent drop in profits. The retailer blaming what it describes as an increasingly serious theft problem. Telsey Advisory Group Senior Managing Director Joe Feldman says Dix is on a growing list of companies, including Target and Home Depot, sounding that alarm. A lot of the stolen merchandise just ends up um, being resold on third-party marketplace online. The National Retail Federation organized retail crime accounted for more than $94 billion in losses in 2021. Global News 24 hours a day, powered by more than 2,700 journalists and analysts in more than 120 countries. I'm Amy Morris, and this is Bloomberg. John. All right, Amy, thank you very much. And that brings us to 510 on Wall Street. That's time for our Bloomberg Sports Update. And for that, let's bring in Bloomberg's Dan Schwartzman. Good morning, John. Let's start out in Major League Baseball where the Mariners remain red hot. I drive right field. Giddy up and go. Josh Rojas, two run homer for one Mariners. That's courtesy of MLB Network. The Mariners are now winners of eight straight and just one game out of first place in their division after knocking off the White Sox in Chicago 6-3. Elsewhere, the Athletics sneaking past the Royals 5-4. Braves getting past the Mets in Atlanta 3-2. Red Sox falling to the Astros on the road in Houston 7-3. The Yankees are now losers of nine straight. They fall at home to the Nationals 2-1. It's their longest losing streak since 1982. While in 10 innings, the Blue Jays lose at the Orioles 6-3 and the Giants fall to the Phillies in Philadelphia 4-3. Major League Baseball has placed Tampa Bay Rays shortstop Wander Franco on administrative leave amid multiple investigations into possible relationships in the Dominican Republic with underage girls. The 22-year-old has not played the past week after Tampa placed him on the restricted list. The All-Star is in the second year of an 11-year, $182 million contract. In the NFL, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers naming Baker Mayfield as their starting quarterback over 2021 second-round draft pick Kyle Trask. Mayfield was the first overall pick of the Browns back in 2018 before being traded to the Panthers a year ago. The 28-year-old was released by Carolina Carolina after week 12 before finishing up the season with the Rams. That's your Bloomberg Sports Update. I'm Dan Schwartzman. 
From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business App, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. And good morning. I'm John Tucker. Well, at the heart of this year's hype around artificial intelligence sits NVIDIA. The chipmaker opening its books after the close of regular trading in New York today. And with the preview, I'm happy to say we're joined by Bloomberg technology reporter Alex Webb. Alex, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, if they don't meet their forecast, Alex, I'm thinking that there's going to be blood in the streets. <laughs> Give us a preview. Yeah, it's it's certainly a company that has been bid up significantly in the in the past few months. Although, interestingly, if you look at the the multiple at which it's trading, it's currently at forty four times its forward earnings. Now that is a premium to the Philadelphia Stock Exchange Semiconductor Index, which is trading at twenty four times its forward earnings. But uh, it has come down quite a lot. Now, of course, you know that that forward earnings multiple is partly because analyst ratings have been uh, uh, you know they have. They're anticipating higher revenue for the rest of the year. So any indication of a wobble on that front um, is likely to be punished. Uh, you know, this is the case though with any of the big tech companies right now. They're all been trading at very uh, generous multiples and there's a lot of enthusiasm around them. But any hint of a wobble um, has broad implications potentially for the market itself, given the concentration of growth in those stocks. Okay, so what have they guided at this point? And can they meet those expectations, or at least, uh, you know, in terms of what the analysts are saying? Yeah, so the they, I mean, the reason for this huge surge is that they predicted this quarter they would do eleven billion dollars in revenue. That would be up from seven billion dollars uh, the previous calendar quarter, um, and. Uh, was about 50% higher than analysts at that time had been expecting. Now, the consensus is very much in line with that. In fact, it's ever so slightly higher. 11.04 billion is what analysts um, are anticipating. The focus, though, will really be on on the fiscal third quarter, which ends in, in um, oct at the end of October. A analysts are looking for 12.5 billion in revenue in that quarter. And so that will be is likely to be the real decider in, in how the market reacts. You know, the fascinating thing to me about this is that NVIDIA seems to have been able to play both sides of the artificial intelligence story, the hype and the actual business associated with that. I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Look, if anything, they have... They've responded to the hype. You know, they, they weren't saying a year ago, we are going to be delivering in this quarter, $11 billion of revenue. This came after ChatGPT, right? The ChatGPT comes along, there's a huge amount of enthusiasm. Then the cloud computing um, giants, the likes of Google, Amazon, and Microsoft, they um, recognize that there is huge demand for this AI stuff, or at least expect there to be a huge demand for generative AI. So they start kitting out their data centers. And if you're gonna kit out the data centers, well, then you need the chips to do it. And that's why they turn to NVIDIA. So um, NVIDIA is very much riding the wave of that rather Rather than necessarily, um, you know, being a, a generator of hype and hype alone. Well, let's talk about the competition. Companies like Microsoft are there? Are they frenemies to uh, Nvidia? No, I mean Nvidia is very much a supplier for Microsoft. Uh, there, look, what we're starting to see is that some of these um, big tech companies uh, are generating their own uh, chips to to power AI, but. Uh, they're a little bit behind, perhaps, where NVIDIA is right now. And it's, there's also a question of capacity, because you know, they need a foundry to make this. A company like TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, they, will, they make this stuff under license from NVIDIA, as they do for the other companies, for, for Microsoft, for Google, Apple, and others. Uh, NVIDIA is the one that has a huge amount of capacity right now. They, are, they have the product. It is available. That might change in the months, years ahead. But in, in the short term, um, NVIDIA is in a very good place. Okay. What next from NVIDIA? What have they done for me lately? It's really interesting seeing uh, their CEO talking at various conferences where, you know, he does show off the capabilities of their tech and the applications of their tech. And, <clears throat> excuse me, 
at the moment we're seeing pretty you know rudimentary generative ai stuff largely text based or sometimes image based in future we're going to be seeing it used in gaming for instance there was a fascinating uh, video that the ceo showed in taiwan a few months ago where you know you're playing a video game often in the example he gave you go into a bar and you start into interacting with the 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 animated character there now historically the animated character will have three or four program responses perhaps in this version you can literally talk to them through your headset and they will react um, and give you completely new responses they generate each time but with a goal in mind to send you on to the next phase of the game that is really the uh, the, the next sort of thing we're going to be seeing more sophisticated more advanced stuff but those games are being developed sort of right now and won't come to market for a little while yet you're listening to Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington. Bloomberg 1061 in Boston and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM Channel 119, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm John Tucker. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.